Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In the Explain series, we take a sexual health topic and explain it. And this week, it's the turn of bacterial vaginosis, otherwise known just simply as BV. So what is bacterial vaginosis? Well, bacterial vaginosis is where you have um, an absence of good bacteria. So the bacteria that really needs to be in the vagina are called lactobacilli. Uh, and they are the ones that can cause a slightly acidic environment uh, that enable it, though it makes it more difficult for things like thrush and bad bacteria to grow in the vagina. Um, so what are the symptoms <coughs> of uh, bacterial vaginosis? Uh, well, the most common symptom is um, a thick discharge, uh, and that can also be um, a foul smelling. Typically, it smells uh, very, very fishy. When I say a thick discharge, it doesn't necessarily mean like a, a cottage cheese discharge. That tends to be more of uh, due to thrush. Uh, so the discharge we're looking for is uh, sort of like a can be a white, uh, can be a greyish discharge, and uh, usually has a heavy scent to it. Uh, as I said, usually described as uh, fishy. Uh, bacterial vaginosis is not a sexually transmitted infection, and anyone can have uh, bacterial uh, uh, bacterial vaginosis. Uh, it just depends. Uh, on uh, one if you're sexually active because usually the more sexually active you are uh, the higher chances of um, getting uh, bacterial vaginosis but to be honest with you even a virgin uh, can have uh, bacterial vaginosis so what can cause bacterial vaginosis well uh, washing incorrectly and so uh, please wash uh, so watch the uh, video on genital care uh, so how do you wash incorrectly? Well, using a lot of uh, soaps and bubble baths are uh, not very good. Uh, douching, that's where you push water into your vagina to sluice the vagina out, uh, can also cause uh, bacterial vaginosis. Uh, the simplest way to get tested for it is to come to a sexual health clinic uh, where they can take a swab and uh, spread it on a microscopic slide and look at it under the microscope. And then they'll be able to tell you for definite whether you have BV. <clears throat> um, your GP can also do occasional tests, but it may take a lot longer uh, for the results to come through. And sometimes the results can be a little bit inconclusive. In terms of the treatment, that's very simple. Uh, it's just a, a one course of uh, metronidazole, which is a metallic tasting tablet, uh, 400 milligrams twice a day for between five and seven days. <clears throat> there are other treatments if you uh, are allergic to metronidazole. <clears throat> but there are also a few home treatments you can try as well. Uh, so one uh, is a, a treatment that has been used <clears throat> a few times by my patients, and that is natural live yogurt, obviously unflavoured. It's where you take a little bit of natural live yogurt on your finger and put it directly into the vagina. What is the point of doing that? Well, in natural live yogurt, you have a lot of lactobacilli, and lactobacilli uh, help keep uh, the environment of the vagina uh, acidic. Uh, while this particular method is <clears throat> generally unproven, uh, there is uh, a lot of evidence regarding uh, that this whole process is what's called a vaginal dysbiosis. In other words, an imbalance of the type of bacteria you have in the vagina. Another thing that some people do is take probiotics. Now, at the moment, there are only 60 and some papers up to 70 percent uh, effective and the type of pro probiotics you can take are usually in capsule form or you can take it in pessary form. A pessary is effectively a tablet which you insert directly into the vagina through an applicator. Now the thing about all probiotics it's a numbers game. The higher the number of bacteria you take in the capsule or in the pessary the, the higher the chances of success. And so if you're going to buy a probiotic for a health food shop and it has on the label half a billion cultures or two or three billion cultures, you are unfortunately wasting your money. You need a much, much higher uh, culture volume. And a good culture volume to start off with is 20 billion cultures or more. Pessaries, however, tend to start a little bit lower, uh, around about uh, a good for a good one, five to 10 billion. But uh, if not, just take the oral one of 20 billion cultures or higher. 
uh, to give you an idea uh, of how important the numbers game is when it comes to bacteria and your body, if you pile all your DNA up that is in your body and a small pile in front of you, only 1% would actually be your DNA. The rest of the DNA would belong to viruses, bacteria and other organisms. This isn't a bad thing because it's those uh, other organisms in terms of different types of bacteria and viruses are actually keeping us alive and keeping us healthy. So it's good to be friendly to good bacteria and they will stop uh, you getting uh, bacterial vaginosis. In terms of prevention, well, the best thing is to wash correctly. So please watch uh, the uh, genital care uh, video, which is uh, a few weeks before this one. Um, uh, don't use soap, you can just use water and don't douche. And if you do bath, please don't use bubble bath. You can get further information on bacterial vaginosis from uh, a few websites. I personally would recommend uh, the British Association of Sexual Health and HIV, otherwise known as BASH, uh, and they can give uh, a few useful guidance and guidelines as to what you can do. There are other websites as well, but uh, be careful of uh, weird shoddy treatments on the internet. Uh, and I tend to advise you just to stick with the, uh, the guidance given in the BASH uh, website. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope you um, have a good uh, sexual health. And if you like this episode, please uh, share, like and subscribe. And catch you next week. Take care. Have good sexual health. Bye bye.